When you're ready to start sewing on your new Singer Heavy Duty 4452 sewing machine, you've gone through our video of how to properly thread it and also how to put the bobbin in. We've talked about good quality thread so it performs to its highest ability. Now we're gonna talk about how to just get to different settings, change them even while we're sewing. Yes, we can do that. So let's just talk about um, putting our fabric underneath our presser foot. I do have two layers of fabric so if you're ever just sewing on one layer you probably notice the stitches are like okay double up that fabric you'll see me do it all the time in our videos here and then lower the presser foot down make sure that the take up lever is starting at the highest position and if you do that every time you start you don't have to hold those threads when you start to sew so usually when I'm sewing a straight stitch you just want to go ahead put the singer logo straight uh, normal and we will be using a stitch length of two and a half to work with kind of a base basic uh, thickness of fabric. If you're working with a little heavier fabric, you can turn it up to three or four. And one of the things you can do is you can actually adjust the stitch length, make it longer even while you're sewing. So that is something to do. Usually, if you're going to stop, you can lift the presser foot up and turn your fabric around if you're just kind of experimenting with these different settings. Now, if you're turning it all the way to zero or really close to zero, you're gonna notice you're not going anywhere. The stitches are super, super small. So go ahead, find that stitch length where you don't have to actually push the fabric through. If you're finding you're having to help it go through the machine, lengthen out your stitch length just a little bit. Now if you want to go to a zigzag, the zigzag stitch is the black stitch. Length, you will change that as well, but now we're going to come up to the stitch width dial. Usually I leave it at, well I do leave it at zero when we're doing a straight stitch, but as you bring it to say three, we'll get a little bit wider, zigzag all the way up to six millimeters wide. Now I'm going to take this out and show you what we've done so far. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over to the right side of the machine, turn the hand wheel towards me, bring the needle all the way up, but also bring the take up lever to the highest position. See how much further I turn that hand wheel to bring that up here. Again, if you start and stop at that take up lever at the highest position, lifting up your presser foot next, sliding your fabric off to the side, there's a little cutter on this side. You can take your threads from front to back or back to front and cut them. So here's what we've got so far as we turned it to a zigzag. I started at three and then went and enlarged it or wind it all the way up to six while I was sewing. So again, you can do that while you're sewing and it doesn't harm the machine at all. If you're looking for another stitch, let's do the next one, kind of a multiple point zigzag. You can do a stitch width of any width. I'll leave it at six and it's ready to start stitching. This little zigzag is like different stitches all the way down. Great for sewing elastic on or if you make the stitch length really, really short, this is a great one to actually do for mending. So if you've got a hole in something, you can go back and forth lots of times and uh, fill in a hole. So super easy to actually work on there. So as you go ahead and choose, now the needle is down in my fabric right now. This is not the time to turn this dial because as I turn it, that needle shifts. And you don't want to shift it and kind of bend it with the fabric, with it in the fabric. So if you just bring your needle up, doesn't matter where, just out of the fabric, now you're safe to turn it to the next stitch you want to try. So again, if you want to do the blue stitches, turn it to the blue S1. And now I'll be stitching the stitch that's showing in the middle of this particular group of stitches. And all of my needles up, I'll just turn it to the red S2. And now I'm doing the other stitch. Okay, at the end. Now this one, when I stopped, I happened to stop just right, the needle's up. I see the take-up lever's at the highest position, so I can reach behind and pull it out smoothly. So those are the other two stitches that I was just playing with on that area. Now these can be fun if you did variegated threads, you did a metallic thread, just don't forget a metallic needle if you're gonna do something fun like that. And when you wanna go back to a straight stitch, you can go back to 
the black numbers, two and a half is kind of like where I want to go, and then you can go ahead and begin stitching. Do take time to move this back to zero. This is the width, stitch width, and your needle returns to the center. So that's another way to move your needle to different needle positions, center all the way to the left side. But you do have the ability on a straight stitch to move your needle position to the far right side, center, or far left side, however you want to stitch. But again, you can kind of see, you don't have to stop sewing to turn that needle position dialed. You can just go ahead and stitch. But if you can get in the habit of always turning your hand wheel towards you, bringing that take-up lever to the highest position, lifting up your presser foot, cutting your threads, there's your right, middle, and left needle position to go along with the other settings of this machine. Now we do talk about some, uh, stitching out a stitch book, a little sampling of all the stitches in here. We'll put a link below this YouTube video where you can learn to make the ultimate stitch book and have some fun doing it.